Hey Top Shelfers, welcome to After Hours, our exclusive content for our premium members here for Top Shelf History. Today we are discussing uh, a little bit of the mixology of making the drink for Marie Antoinette's Let Them Drink Cake. And today I want to focus particularly on the importance of garnish and presentation in drinks because after all when we think of drinks we don't just think of you know something that tastes decent in a solo cup like if you wanted to have like a really good drink like let's say an old-fashioned but it was served in a red plastic solo cup that totally negates most of the alcohol drinking experience for most cocktails so it's almost as important as what's in the drink as how the drink looks and today I want to talk to you guys about how I came up with the garnish for let them drink cake now with let them drink cake the whole purpose that I had going into that drink was I wanted to create something opulent something that was akin to the really lavish French parties that were going on that you know infuriated the French people and wanted them to behead her um, and ended up you know, leading to the end of the monarchy in general so for that I wanted to create a presentation of cake in our drink and so with that we decided to rim our glass with chocolate now mind you I'm using a very particular glass here. This is almost like a champagne glass. Not one of the flutes, but one of the wider ones. Um, and it's just as important when you're creating your own cocktails of which glass you choose to present your drink in as much as I would say as the garnish as you have. Like I said, it all comes down to presentation here. It's all part of that wonderful cocktail drinking experience. So this was the glass I chose. I felt it was petite, it was beautiful, and also at the same time, it had a nice rim for us to be able to present our cakey white chocolate exterior. So for us here, I'm going to start off our process. It's very simple. I decided to get some, um, the, uh, not vanilla, some white chocolate uh, melting wafers. Now this is Ghirardelli. You could use any chocolate company that you want, something that's easily meltable. You can do it on a double boiler. Uh, in other words, what you do is that you would take a pot and then you would take a bowl much like this that would fit in the rim of the pot and you would uh, boil water um, not a lot of it just a little under it on a lower heat and you continue to stir and then it would melt in the other bowl and that's how one way you can melt it the other way you can melt it is that we could do it really really easily and that is by throwing it in the microwave because you know in brilliant people decided let's just do things quicker and that's where we got the microwave how to cook food quicker great idea we'll put that on for a minute we're gonna let that start to melt down a little bit and as it comes out you want to kind of do these in in waves uh you know keep an eye on it because we don't want the chocolate to burn or bubble up too much or else it becomes bitter even in white chocolate so we're gonna melt it down a little bit see where it is we're gonna stir it up with our spoon and then uh, if it needs to be melted a little bit more, we'll throw it back in. So I'm gonna actually check in on this here. We're around 30 seconds just to see how we're doing. Um, break it up a little bit where we can. So that one hasn't really even melted yet. We got a little bit of movement here, but I still think we got plenty of time. We're even gonna add an extra 30 seconds here. And like I said, we wanna do some waves just to prevent any burning. And also, in all honesty, this will also save their glassware. Nothing's worse than burnt on food, on your on uh, your bowls or on your plates or anything else. That's a pain in the butt to have to clean. So we're also gonna do ourselves a favor there. But we're gonna jump towards the end when this is all nice and melted. Um, like I said, for you guys at home, just do this in waves until it's all melted nice and evenly and we don't have any chunks. So at the snap, we will be right back. We're just gonna see we're breaking this up here this has been melted down a good amount this is about a minute here that we've been putting this down and melting and honestly as it continues to heat and the more you move this around you can even continue to melt up those chunks without having to throw it back in the microwave too so but I think I'm gonna put it in for a few more seconds just to get that last amount done and then we'll bring it back out. Got a little chocolate there. 
So we're gonna let that melt down for the last couple seconds here, and then we're gonna incorporate it. And luckily I chose a, a pretty wide mouth bowl. Um, one thing that we can do is that we can transfer this to a smaller plate or something that has a nice even edge because we want something nice and flat so we can get a good rim around our glass. So that's equally important. Sounds like we're done here. I don't think we got any bubbling, which is good. Oh, only a little bit of bubbling. Don't want it to bubble too much, of course, because then it's too warm. But that is all melted. There's no chunks in there. This is beautiful and smooth. So I think this is exactly how we want this to be. So let's move it over here. Now, looking at this bowl, this is a little bit too small for us. Um, it was a good melting bowl for me, but I actually want a bigger surface area. So I'm gonna get a bigger plate so that we can make sure that when we put it in, it's all gonna go in evenly and we can get a nice even coating. We don't want it to be uneven or else that's gonna ruin our presentation. So let me get that new plate here. And we're just, I'm just gonna dump this on out. Got a decent amount of white chocolate here. And then we're just gonna spread it out nice and evenly so that we have a good base. And now we've got a good amount of surface area to work with with rimming our glass. This is definitely more than we need, so this is perfect. So now what we're just gonna do is we're gonna take this and dip it in nice and evenly. We're gonna do it a couple turns, that way we get even strokes all along and that there's no uneven areas. We're gonna pop this back up. We have beautiful little distribution there. Now that's nice and thin. Next, we're gonna take our to put that down there mind you this will melt a little bit so you want to move a little quickly and then here i'm going to over a bowl with a you know wet paper towel and then we're going to take these sprinkles and we're going to just put this over the top and we're just going to line our drink here these will bounce all over the place so have fun cleaning that up afterwards but it's okay totally worth it you'll wow your friends with the amount of effort you're putting in here Beautiful. Now it's got a nice little drip there and that's okay. That will kind of still go with the theme that we're looking for. You want to take this, you want to put it in your fridge and you want to let it harden. Uh, that way we have a good uh, center for everything um, and uh, it won't continue to drip. Uh, so that's going to be important, especially when we throw in the other liquids. It doesn't mess with our presentation. So let me throw this in the fridge and I'll come back to you guys after it's cool. So now we've taken the glass out of the fridge and as you can see, it's kind of chilled a little bit, which will be fine if you pour the drink in, the drink will start to really fill that color and you'll get rid of the fogginess. But you can see here that we've made a pretty good impression. We have a little bit of drippage, which is nice. You kind of get that natural, cool look uh, from the gravity. We have the confetti uh, sprinkles going around the rim. And honestly, this is gonna grab your attention when you're looking at the drink. Because when I'm looking at the drink, as I'm looking at with a lot of garnishes, is that this is going to give me a preview of what I'm going to expect the drink to taste like. When I see something like this, I'm gonna expect it to be sweet, sugary, delicious, um, you know, something probably a little creamy, and that's exactly what's in this drink, right? If you have other drinks, let's say it's a, it's a Cuba Libre, which has uh, a little bit of lime on it. Well, you got something sweet, you got something sour, and you got, you know, something fizzy in there, right? But you get an idea that there's gonna be a sour component because of the lime. You're gonna get an idea that there's gonna be a citrus component if there's if it's garnished with an orange. Like for example, when you put in uh, the orange garnish for in old fashioned, for example. That's a great idea because not only will that give you an idea of one of the flavor components that's in there, in your own mind before you even take a sip, but then you'll also get the aromatics of the orange that will also help, and it all comes together in giving you an experience in the drink because it's not just how it tastes, it's how it looks, it's how it smells, and it's also in what type of glass it's in. All of those goes into making a delicious and fantastic drink, and it's everything that every mixologist can take into consideration when you're making your drinks at home. So remember yourself, when you're making a new drink, don't shirk really good garnishes. That's something I'm trying to figure out this season. I know last season I didn't pay nearly as much attention, as I think, to the garnishes that really make drinks pop, and that's my goal going forward. And I think this is a good example of just one small way, one simple way, to really make your drink stand out. So I hope this will help you guys when you guys decide to make your own drinks at home. If you come up with anything that's really, really cool, please feel free to share with us on at Top Shelf History 
uh, com, or you can also share with us uh, from our social media platforms. We have Rumble, we have Instagram, we have YouTube. So please reach out to us. We'd love to see it all. Um, and from all of us here at Top Shelf History, cheers. Thank you.